Let the Children March by Monica Clark Robinson and it is also illustrated by Frank Morrison. 1963, Birmingham, Alabama. I couldn't play on the same playground as the white kids. I couldn't go to their schools. I couldn't drink from their water fountains. There were so many things I couldn't do. One warm spring night, my family went to church. We weren't there to have regular services. We were there to hear Dr. King speak. We were there to plan. He wanted to raise an army of peaceful protesters to fight for freedom, his brown eyes flashing fire and love. Dr. King told us the time had come to march. If I march, Mama said, I'll lose my job sure enough. I can't march, Daddy said. I got a family to feed. The weight of the world rested on our parents' shoulders. But this burden, this time, did not have to be theirs to bear. I don't have a boss to fear, my brother said, or a job to lose. We can march this time. We'll be Dr. King's army, I said. I'll be fine, Daddy, I promised. Don't worry, Mama. Dr. King didn't like children being put in harm's way. He was a daddy, too, after all. But he said that though we were young, we were not too young to want our freedom. Let the children march. They will lead the way. On May 2nd, a sunny Thursday, boys and girls, brothers and sisters, cousins and friends, we all met at the church dressed in our best, feet ready. In a silence so loud that all I could hear was my racing heart, we began to walk. Hand in hand we march, so frightened, yet certain of what was right for freedom. The path may be long and troubled, but I'm going to walk on. Would I be hurt? Would we be heard? Would it all be worth it in the end? I wanted to run from the angry faces in the crowd, run from danger, run from fear. Boys and girls, brothers and sisters, cousins and friends, on and on we marched. We marched. We marched. Hate dogged my heels all that day. Its yellowed canine teeth sharp, but courage walked by my side and kept me going. Disperse or you'll be jailed, the police shouted the first day. Disperse or you'll get wet the police shouted the second day. Disperse, or we'll release the dogs, the police shouted the third day. We did not disperse. We kept on marching. We wouldn't stop until things started to change. Hundreds of us went to jail on the first day, and even more on the second. My turn wasn't until the third day. After I was sprayed by water stronger than anything I've ever felt. Rough hands pushed me forward and I fell to my knees in the police wagon. I was going to jail. Dr. King reassured our parents, don't worry about your children, he said. They're going to be all right. Don't hold them back if they want to go to jail, for they are doing a job for not only themselves, but for all of America and for all of mankind. That night, crowded into a cell too small for even half of the kids, we sang, We shall overcome, ain't gonna let nobody turn me round, and freedom is coming. Our parents couldn't be there with us, but still we sang, wrapped in the proud and loving arms of our ancestors. I was still in jail, but we heard that the next day and the next, more kids marched. The water hoses they used to sting us could not stop our fierce tide. The path may be long and troubled, but I'm going to walk on. Turn the other cheek, we had been taught. Show love where there is hate. 
The world watched as hate bruised us. But for seven days, we walked only in love. The jail swelled to bursting, and even President Kennedy took notice. Daddy said the president received letters and calls about us from all over the world. Our march would become a memory, a small part of a larger story. But we had been heard, and the seeds of revolution were sown. Two days and nights, I stayed in jail. Some stayed even longer. When I left, I was tired and sore, and my best dress was ripped, but my smile was as wide as the Mississippi River. I had made a difference. I'm so proud of you, baby girl, Mama said. Your march was what made them see. With nothing more than our feet, voices, and courage, we had done what others could not. Change was right around the corner. We felt like it, like a cool breeze in an Alabama August. On May 10th, the great news rang out. Dr. King had reached an agreement with the white leaders of the city. Desegregation would begin. One month later, I was playing on a playground I'd never been allowed to play on before. Two months later, my family ate at a diner we'd never been allowed to eat in before. Our march made the difference. We children led the way.